guys welcome back this will be part two of the video for today um, and that's only because I don't know how to splice the videos in to get it all in one big video but I'm working on that um, right I've got both mirror covers sanded down I have spirit wiped them again got them nice and clean um, got them mounted on my paddles as I said earlier this is how I like to paint things one thing you've got a flat surface here now so if there is any dust in the room it's not going to drop straight into the top of your mirror when you're painting it so this eliminates the dust all my painting edges if you can see are falling away from gravity you'll say um, use duct tape when attaching a lollipop to a part I've used um, masking tape before now even the blue masking tape and sometimes any heat that's in the room or if I if I need to infrared cure these to dry them off um, it'll attack the glue because after all masking tape is only meant as a permanent uh, sorry is only meant as a temporary adhesive um, the problem with that is sometimes the masking tape can come off when you don't want it to so rather than this fall on the floor when it's nice and shiny um, use duct tape it's the easiest to get off it peels off easier anybody that's put masking tape on a car and left it there for a week or so and it's happened to get wet trying to pull that masking tape off you know the problem so this comes off easy as well as doesn't fall off on its own um, so we're ready to go I've pre-warmed up the aerosols only just in the in the infrared heating here just just to take the chill off the can because they were quite cold they were left in the house overnight um, I've got one tin that I'm going to use up first and I should use about one tin per mirror that might seem a, quite a lot of paint but I need to ensure that I've got good coverage over these and it's not a darker version of that color when I finished so I need to make sure that the only thing that the that the reflection is given and the colour is given is the true colour. Um, I will now blow off with some high pressure air. I'll tack rag with a new tack rag. Um, for the first part of painting I won't put my mask on. I'll try and talk to you guys and try and talk through a few bits and pieces. I will have the fan on so any nasties will be sucked out my way. Um, when I start to paint I will be painting the edges first and a little bit on the inside of the mirror. Um, that does two things. One, it makes sure that I've got cover right to the end of the mirror, but it also, if there's any dust that's now on the back side of the mirror, it'll contain it and stop it going onto the painted surface on the front. Um, and as I've said in other videos, when you paint parts, paint peeling, we have to address paint peeling. If I was to only paint up to the edge of this paint here, there's nothing supporting my paint to stop it peeling off. So by the time this is doing 80 miles an hour down the motorway with flies attacking it and stone chips and whatever, it's very easy for, for abrasion to happen and peel the paint back. So when you paint something, paint around the corners, back onto the inside, there is no edge then for the paint to start peeling from. So it sort of encapsulates the part rather than paints up to the end of the part. That way you'll reduce uh, any peeling. Uh, this is why I've said before about painting bumpers and things on a car. I've seen people mask off the rear quarter of a panel of, a, of, of the, the car and then paint up to the bumper line. If you can get that paint to go into the bumper edge and round, there's less chance of it peeling back from like jet washing and things. So for the sake of undoing a few clips that's normally on a bumper cover, dropping it say an inch and being able to get paint inside there, it won't peel. Um, right, I'll put the fan on then. I'll start painting. Uh, um, I'll do some blowing off and some tack ragging. Um, and keep watching.
before the cap leg blown off, start putting some colour on. Start from the back. Lots of little dusty coats. Let it up at the back. Start to contain the dust. moving quite fast if we are putting on a metallic base coat. Lots of light coats keep moving the part. Once you see that there's an even wetness to it, that's the first coat finished. that one to the other side so any overspray from this can doesn't dry onto the second one. Same again. Keep further in the trigger of the aerosol. Is that one wrong? They've only had a little bit left in that one. behind the back of the lollipop, wet the, front, the uh, inside, just enough to contain the dust, you're not going to have to paint there. Keep the can moving fast, keep it dusting on, got no stripes, no lines, no mottling. Hope you can see that. Real random strokes. This is something you can't do if you haven't got it on a lollipop. You can't keep it moving. Keeping it moving is stopping you getting the mottled effect from an aerosol. Or rattle pan as you know things like falling them. Once you've got an even wetness, and it's not a gloss, we're not trying to put a lacquer on. Once it's wet, it's a closed wet coat all around with no dryness, no overspray. That's one coat. That will now dry, go dull, and be ready for the next coat. As you can see in the relationship to that one, this one's now starting to go dull. But if you look, there's no mottling. It's one nice, even metallic coat of paint. Got no blotchiness, no runs, no wet edges, and this has been having it on the on the lollipop that we can keep going and put lots of nice thin coats. We we do have an option at this stage. We've got a heat gun. You can heat set that coat of paint if you like. There's there's nothing wrong with doing that. The downside is these can, things can suck in a lot of dust in the atmosphere and then it does it blows it straight onto your painted job. So I sort of don't really care for that much. The other way, the other reason, um, as that paint is drying now, it's still flowing out nice. If you were to heat set it, it wouldn't flow out quite as nice. Let it do its thing naturally. It's quite warm in here. I did do the temperature earlier, it was about 22 degrees uh, and that's centigrade, so it's quite warm in here to paint. Um, as you can see, this is real time. We've only been a minute or so, and that is 95% a base coat finish already dried off. Also, can you see that's a very fine coat of paint? There's no film build on it at the moment, but we have no rubbing down marks. So, obviously, the P500 grit with the little orbit sander um, and the soft back marker pads to finish their edges does the trick we don't get any lines and that's only one coat of paint we probably put two or three on there just to make sure we've got coverage this one's now starting to dull off very slightly as you can see again we have no bits no contamination we have no silicons um, no foreign bodies it's a perfectly virgin coat of paint we probably will get, I'm hoping that we do get a few little bits in it actually, and then I can take you through a, 
a fourth video and we'll show you how to just denib about a few bits and pieces and uh, and polish the surface but um, there's not many painters that say they want to get dirt in the paint but let's see what we can do um, this one now it's flashed off because I've only put a fine coat of paint in so we're not looking for a quarter of an hour flash off sort of five minutes or so is fine um, because it's gone dull we can safely say our solvents have come out it's now ready for the second coat that one's a little bit slower so I'll put a second coat on this as I think it's ready um, we might have to wait a little bit longer for the other one but keep watching edges again we all want painting Same spray in action, nothing different. We don't do a, a drop coat as such on this at the moment. This is just keep it random coats, light coats. I didn't tack rag the second coat because we had nothing in the surface. Nothing to tack out, nothing to do. Keep it moving. Change direction. There we go. Coat two. Now this one's gone dull. That extra couple of minutes. This one has gone dull. A little light bit of um, shininess. I'll hold it in front of this fire as you're watching on the camera, just enough just to push those solvents out a little bit. Um, you don't really want to warm the part up. Your atmosphere should be nice enough in here temperature-wise. If you warm the part, um, as soon as you put the paint on, it'll try and dry straight, to straight away. So you won't get a nice wet film build over the whole part, certain bits of it will dry faster than other. Then you start getting orange peel and texture and you don't get this perfectly flat finish, um, which you want. You want the flattest finish possible on your base coat because you're now going to put clear lacquer on there and if you've got a, a rough surface, you're going to need to put extra coats of clear on to get it smooth. That's tidy, I'm okay with that. Once again, no bits, so I'm not going to tack rag in between coats. and the movement that's actually going to give us um, our fan width. I can feel that we're just about empty on this aerosol. And that's because I think we're just about there on the end of the second coat. I'm going to sit with it. If you feel the aerosol getting empty, Stop, change to another one. Don't try and get the last bit of the aerosol. It will spit and splutter on you. You'll get blobs in it. For the sake of waste, wasting a little bit of paint in the aerosol, do it. Don't try and get every last bit out. There we go. Nice even coverage again. Fully wet all over. No dryness. All our edges are covered. No bits, no dust. Again, you're never too late to put something right. I don't think it might have covered and we've got an issue. I thought that I could see a little bit of darker grey through that tip. So once again, dusted it. And I sprayed from the back so that I didn't get wet paint over an area that's already flashing off. I sprayed from the back. That's good. That's done. That's the base coat done. Yeah, still no bits, no foreign bodies, clean as a whistle. 
And that's all in the preparation of doing it right in the first place. That'll flash off now. I'll leave that now for probably a quarter of an hour. I'll, um, I'll go into the other workshop, I'll mix up some two-pack clear, and um, once that's all nice and dull and flat, I will then give it a tack rag with a water-based tack rag, a 3N one, that's all I use. Um, and then we'll put two coats of lacquer. Because the base coat is very fine, there's no texture in the base coat, I will only need two, co two coats of lacquer. So I'll put one coat on, which seals, which is called a closed coat, which will seal the whole part. Um, let that flash off for a good 10 minutes or so. Um, do a thumb test on my lollipop so I can see if the paint is ready. If it leaves your fingerprint, it's too wet. As soon as you get it to that tackiness, as it doesn't leave a fingerprint, then we'll put the second coat on. Once you've got the second coat in, there's ample paint on there then to um, to protect the part from UV rays so that the paint doesn't fade and go dull in years to come. Right, that's part two. Um, I'll turn the fan off, go and set up for my clear lacquer and be back to you guys as soon as I can. Keep watching.